I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nishit Solanki from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Neogen Chemicals Earnings Conference Call for Analysts and Investors. The call has been hosted to discuss the fourth quarter and full year financial performance and share operating highlights of the company. Joining us on the call today are senior members of the management team, including Dr. Harin Kanani, Managing Director, Mr. Anurag Surana, Director, Mr. Ketan Vyas, Chief Financial Officer. We will commence the call with opening thoughts from the management team, post which we shall open the forum for question and answer session, where the management will be glad to respond to any queries that you may have. At this point, I would like to add that some statements made or discussed on the conference call today may be forward-looking statements. The actual results may vary from these forward-looking statements. And a detailed disclaimer in this regard is available in News and Chemicals Q4 and FY21 earnings presentation, which has been shared earlier. I would now like to invite Dr. Harun Kanani to commence by sharing his thoughts on the strategic progress made by the company. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Hi, Nishad. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Neogen Chemicals Q4 and FI21 earnings conference call. These are tough times for all of us, and I hope you and your close ones are safe and in good health. Our earning presentation has been shared earlier, and I hope you have analyzed the key numbers. I will begin by sharing my perspective. We have displayed resilience and reported encouraging performance during the quarter and full year under review. The growth trajectory in FI21 was maintained with 10% revenue growth achieved in spite of capacity constraints as well as other restrictions imposed due to COVID-19 pandemic during the year. Our margins expanded to 19.1% and profit increased by 9% in FI21. Positive demand across key end-user industries ensured optimum utilization at all our plants with supply chain efficiencies. Revenue growth of 10% in FI21 was led by similar growth in organic chemicals and 11% growth in inorganic chemicals after we expanded this facility at the Hage SSZ last year. As you may be aware, lithium is a key raw material for the inorganic chemical segment and we witnessed high volatility in the price of lithium in FI21, mainly on the downward side. So to that extent, our inorganic chemical revenues were lower. We have estimated this impact at around rupees 19 crore during FI21, meaning our organic revenues during this period would have been higher at around 82 crores versus uh, rupees 63 crore segment revenue we have reported had lithium prices remained constant. Now let me update you on our progress of organic chemicals at the Hage SSZ. I am glad to state that the expansion plans have progressed well despite widespread disruptions related to COVID-19 pandemic. We have installed all equipment, including reactors, and have commenced manufacturing of initial commercial batches. Aspects like product quality assurance and customer validation procedures are in progress, after which full commercial production will begin. This is a very proud moment for us because Neogen has, for the first time, built a plan from zero to final commissioning stage with the most advanced safety features and engineering standards. This is state-of-the-art manufacturing infrastructure of international standards will be a point of inflection for Neogen as this plant has been built as per the standards expected by innovators and global MNCs and will enable us to deliver greater value addition to multi-state processes and complex chemistries. I would like to express thanks to our team at The Hedge for their dedication and focus contribution to the implementation of this project in the most difficult times. With the new facility now operationalized, let me reiterate that our FI22 revenue guidance of Rs. 450 crore remains unchanged and it will be our endeavor to achieve it. I will conclude by adding that Neogen remains well poised to benefit from the structural shift in chemical supply chain. Our market leadership position, cost efficient production capabilities and relentless focus on innovation will help us to capitalize on this opportunity. Our endeavor is to work diligently and drive long-term value for all stakeholders to focus execution on our planned initiatives. With that, I conclude my opening comments and would request our CFO, Mr. Ketan Vyas, to continue the discussion by sharing his views on our financial performance. Ketan, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Hari, and a very good evening to everyone present on this call. I will discuss the financial performance of the company for the fourth quarter and full year ended 31st March 2021. 
In Q4 FY21, our revenues increased by 13% year on year to rupees 93 crore. EBITDA improved by 17% to rupees 19 crore, translating to EBITDA margins of 20%, an expansion of 80 basis points year on year. Profit of the tax stood at rupees 9 crore, higher by 27% year on year. In Q4 FY21, our domestic and exports mix stood at 53% and 47% respectively. For FY21, we witnessed 10% improvement in revenue to rupees 336 crore, driven by robust demand for key products. This was achieved despite nationwide shutdown impact for the first two months of the year and localized restrictions imposed due to second wave of COVID-19. EBITDA enhanced by 11%, to the 64 crore, led by realization gains as well as higher operating leverage. Positive EBITDA performance was delivered, even though additional costs were incurred this year on account of COVID-19 related safety protocols. Tax was higher by 9% to rupees 31 crore as a result of better operating efficiency and higher revenue growth. That concludes my opening remarks, and I would now request the moderator to open the session for questions from participants. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Koshal Shah from Dhanki Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much sir, for the opportunity uh, and uh, congrats for the good set of numbers. Uh, sir, I had one question on the uh, Additional capex of around 55 crores that you were that we had planned in the hedge. Um, so if you can throw some more light on that and when uh, that is likely to be commissioned, that was one. The second was if you can you know maybe share some more color on any new customer additions. I if I recollect uh, you know our earlier interaction on on, on the calls, I think you had signed um, a few long term customers. I think in Q2 and Q3. So maybe some uh, some color on that. Have you started supplying to these uh, new customers, etc.? That's it. Okay. Thank you for your question. Uh, yes. Uh, so we have completed the initial 75 crore capex, as well as we have continued, and we also started uh, the second 55 crore also in parallel because it was more efficient for us to get some of the work done together. So the investment continues on the 55 crore as well. And it will be uh, done over a period of this year. So majority of this, so the uh, reactors, additional reactors which we are installing will uh, you know, keep coming gradually between Q3 and Q4 uh, of the, sec so basically the second half of the year. And we expect to complete uh, the expansion, the complete investment by end of the current financial year. In reference to the business with the two multi-year uh, contract customers, with both these multi-year contract customers, we have received relevant POs and uh, the POs for the year and the business for, with both the customers have initiated. And with other customers, which we mentioned, we were in discussion. Uh, the discussions are progressing stage-wise, but so far there is nothing concrete from a long-term point of view uh, for us to add there. Great. That's it for now, sir. I'll join back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Trinity Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on good set of numbers for the quarter and uh, during the pandemic time. Uh, so the first question is in terms of the uh, availability of our uh, raw material and as well as uh, from the exports perspective. So we have seen that uh, there have been a lot of uh, disruptions in logistics as well as supply chain. 
So have we faced uh, anything of this in the last couple of months uh, from both the sides, uh, sourcing as well as from exports? Thank you. Uh, hi, Rohit. Thank you for your question. Uh, yes, uh, you know, logistics have been a bit of a challenge. And I think uh, over a period of time, we've seen it slightly improve. So what it was in March and April, uh, it is relatively slightly more better now. But fortunately, you know, we had uh, plant sufficient raw material inventory because if you remember in last year also we said we had like increased our raw material especially imported raw material supply as well as when it comes to main key raw materials bromine also we had kept sufficient inventories so our operations uh, were not impacted uh, because of this to some extent yes your exports uh, were delayed in getting shipment or reaching to the customer or some material was also coming in a bit late and to that extent, your realization of funds, et cetera, may get delayed, but nothing which impacted overall significantly in our revenue or p &S. Right. Uh, that's good to know. Uh, so the second question is in terms of the CSM opportunity. So how are we looking at it from a medium-term perspective? So in any case, uh, we currently have, I think, about 10% uh, of our revenues coming in from CSM, and that should grow in the next three to five years. So over a three to five year period of time, uh, how this opportunity could be capitalized and how are we placed in terms of uh, taking on that opportunity from the uh, management bandwidth perspective, uh, probably the expansion perspective, R&D. If you could just throw some light on this. Thank you. So I think, uh, you know, to first uh, deal with the quantitative numbers part. So what we had said is that, you know, currently roughly around 30% of our business comes from advanced intermediate. And CSM is a part of this 30%. About 10% is uh, currently close to that is around CSM business. And what we had mentioned is that as our revenue goes, and as we have the full utilization of, you know, the total overall capex we are doing in the hedge, which will give us a capability of around 650 to 670 crore. So while uh, targeting to reach this 650, 670 crore, we are targeting to increase the share of advanced intermediates to about 40% and CSM being 20% of that. So this is the initial target that we have set uh, you know, for ourselves. Now, how are we going to achieve that? So in our R&D, as I've also shared earlier, almost 60% of the R&D capacity is being driven by the CSM business. And also over last three years, our, while our revenues have increased, uh, our R&D uh, R &D expense has increased even faster. So the percentage of expense uh, as R&D in last three years has gone up from around 0.5% to close to around 0.9% this year, uh, the year which got completed, and we are expecting to cross even 1%. So our uh, revenue spend in R&D is also increasing. We are also planning some more additional capex to support the projects that we have. So I think uh, we've also added, you know, one additional VP R&D. So we already had one senior R&D, and we've added one more VP R&D below which uh, uh, we have a team of R&D scientists which we keep expanding. We've also added a VP dedicated business development for uh, uh, for uh, just CSM business. So I think uh, with this addition, with our focus, and again, with the interest that we had from the customers, uh, we, we are in a good shape uh, to expand our R&D activity and uh, you know get higher share in CSM. I think uh, our Dahit site getting commission will also help us in this regard. Because as I mentioned in the opening remarks, this is the first time we have been able to make a plan from scratch. So we've got a lot of inputs from our senior management team, Mr. Surana, and other team members who are now part of Neogen, who have also worked in larger organizations of what uh, standards are expected by global MNCs. And we think we have done a very good job of meeting this. So once the hit starts, we should be able to even approach now more customers and with having some capacity available, we should be able to, uh, you know, approach more customers that look, we have capacity. It is, uh, you know, uh, as per your requirements, we also have a good R and D setup now. So we can capture this, you know, trying to achieve 20% of let's say 650 crore 
uh, over the next two to three years is what uh, we are planning to do. And further down the line, now we have also environment clearance at the edge. The site is active, so now you know it has a basic infrastructure. The buildings, etc., are made. So if we have to do capex, so every year we can keep evaluating what projects are coming, what is the underlying business commitment, and based on that, if we want to do even future capex, hopefully we should be able to turn it around also faster. So I I think this will all allow us to capture uh, the CSM opportunity in both agro as well as pharma space. Over next uh, three to five years. Yeah, uh, got it. Uh, thanks a lot, and best of luck. I'll come back and pick you for follow. Thank you, Roy. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurav from Ampex. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So we are seeing the improvement in working capital in this year. So just wanted to uh, get more color. Like, uh, is it? Uh, At this level, we can question or we can further into with the capacity coming in. Yes. So I think uh, you know uh, last year, as we had mentioned, was a bit abnormal because of COVID-related last-minute situation. So we have been able to improve uh, our working capital cycle in the year which just got over. Uh, and uh, yes, our target is especially uh, beyond FI 23 and FI 24. So in FI 22. we would like to at least maintain this level improve it to some extent in between the year you might see some fluctuation because of the hedge plant is coming up we are building up inventory but at least by end of the year once you know operations are smoothened out everything is normalized uh, we are at the current level or still slight improvement and then going fi 23 24 uh, to further improve upon working capital levels uh, as compared to current because we realize that you know when we want to grow very quickly this is one area where improvements will help us uh, conserve our cash and also give better uh, returns on equity and roc is etc so this improvement will largely come from inventory side or still there is scope on creditor side uh, i would say inventory side and to some extent on debtor side yes. so as our exports also increase Uh, we will also try to see to have terms where debtors can also be improved i think for creditors we already had taken a view and we have talked to our major uh, long term suppliers you know so people who are supplying us bromine or some of them who are supplying lithium or some other raw material of relatively higher value uh, these people are now you know with neogens profile improving last year we also got upgraded by crystal so all these help them to discount you know get neogens bill discounted so therefore we could ask for more longer uh, like you know uh, the credit terms with them because we recognize that this will help us i mean this is something which is needed uh, when our business is growing so fast so therefore we that is what allowed us to improve the creditor days uh, and more or less i think you know we are roughly at around 65 70 days or so and uh, this will uh, also uh, keep improving we also got you know so everything that we do is also part of the team so as i mentioned earlier as we got a vp for r&d and business development we also had a, a gm procurement who came to our team who has you know worked in large company uh, so we are now buying less from traders we are buying more from uh, you know directly uh, uh, consumers and Uh, we are also trying to negotiate better terms with uh, you know get, allowing them to get some discounting arrangement based on neogens credit rating so i think that has given the creditor improvement our future improvement should largely come from debtor side and uh, you know inventory side and you know if we get something in creditor will not complain i mean we would like to uh, you know improve those to use our uh, you know market uh, presence in buying in some of the molecules Okay. Uh, and so the uh, second question was on the new plant. So by uh, next for the uh, it will be commercially operational. Yes. So already we are already we are making uh, products which like you know for which we already received POs from our customers and whatever we are currently producing uh, will ultimately go to uh, start going to customers. Uh, so yes. Uh, only what happens is when a new plant starts. Uh, we have to sometimes 
so many of them are transfer of technology from my mahape plant and my karakadi plant so we have to make sure that the technology got transferred we should have to demonstrate to our customer that the testing results here and there are the same the systems are the same the quality is the same and you know get some of their approvals on the line once the production has commenced so that's the reason why uh, it will add to the it will start adding to the revenue from next quarter and more or less uh you know by q3 or q4 we expect that it will be you know much higher uh, i mean we'll be focusing then on the efficiency part uh the utilization levels and how efficient are the operations uh, to stabilize the new site so as we go through the year uh, you know you will see more and more uh, improvement in the revenue so as we go from q2 to q3 to q4 uh, which is contributed from the dahed site okay. uh so one more on the raw material side so are we seeing any kind of uh, no uh, raw material uh, special uh in this quarter maybe in the next quarter that is it like with we having a long term contract maybe we are not able to pass on on immediate basis and it will lag so uh Uh, you mentioned raw material pressure in what sorry I, the voice got yeah, so uh, so any margin pressure in terms of uh, higher raw material prices right so uh, not specifically with regards to raw material we are not expecting a margin pressure because of that okay uh, and so the last one on the what was the utilization for the inorganic plant uh, it was somewhere in the range of around 60 to 70% Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Swarnat Mukherjee from Eden Y. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hi, Harin. Uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, and hope all good at your end. Yes, Swarnat. Thank you. I hope everything good at your end. Yeah. So far, so good, sir. So, uh, two three questions from my side, uh, and apologies if it has been asked because I missed the first few minutes of the call. So, wanted uh, your thoughts uh, on the gross margin development this quarter. Uh, I mean, uh, is it a factor of a better product mix? Uh, because I think uh, overall raw material prices have increased uh, for your uh, base raw materials as well, but you do have a annual contract kind of a thing. If my understanding is correct. Uh, so what led to this better margin profile if you could highlight on that uh, so sort of with two factors uh, one is just a little bit on the product mix side where you can see the gross margin so where you know we were now doing in this quarter more of the long uh, pro- long process value added molecules uh, so we had seen little bit uh, raw material cost was lower and the manufacturing cost which is captured in other costs is slightly on a higher side so this is a bit of the nature that slightly lesser raw material margins i mean gross margins are improved but the manufacturing costs are a little bit higher and the second was lithium uh, where the lithium prices had kind of reduced again that trend throughout last year was there and it was most pronounced in uh, uh, q4 because uh, the q4 of india was q4 of uh, like the material that we received in q4 of india was from of q4 of the uh, uh, calendar month of the world but in 2021 again now the lithium prices have uh, started you know after hitting the bottom they started again increasing uh, and increasing quite fast so last year we also suffered because of lower lithium prices our selling prices were also lower and you know almost we had a revenue differential of around 18 19 crores so this year again it will it has not yet gone to that level but again the trend has started reversing so i think this was just one quarter uh, overall you know if i look at uh, overall whole as a year uh, we were more or less in the line which is 58 to 62% uh, rmc or 40 uh, sorry uh, uh, 40 to 38 yeah percent uh, gross margin level so okay more on the higher side so 42% so let's uh, see how this year goes and how the product mix develops uh, and we see whether this remains a constant trend or it is just maybe for few couple of quarters depending on product mix okay sir so uh, are are we able to uh, 
pass on uh, the prices uh, if even if it goes up so would say for example to uh, rephrase would we be able to maintain say a consistent uh, ebitda per uh, ton kind of a margin even at an absolute level yeah so uh, you know uh, this lithium price increase is uh, uh, lithium price increase is a bit tricky and you know generally what we have been trying to do is uh, that whenever uh, we have so whenever we are booking POs with our customer, or when I am booking new lithium from my supplier, we are kind of ensuring that we don't have too much of you know un uh, un uh, committed inventory, right? In a sense, you can't book take a very large order for which you don't have a supply, versus you can't take a very you can't put a very large order of lithium when you don't have a customer commitment. So we are basically controlling that. now whether it gets so again you know the bare minimum that we get is the absolute margins in lithium are always controlled so we never go down on that but uh, you know uh, because uh, but because sometimes you know if we depending on the supply demand situation competitor situation we can also get away with maintaining our ebitda but overall you know half of so overall lithium is also only 15 20% of our business and that is where you are seeing this kind of a trend so overall half to 1% range you know can vary overall in our because of the product mix and that's why you know i always give uh, you know 18 plus minus 1% so i take that 2% kind of a cushion partly because of uh, you know the product mix changes or such kind of fluctuation okay okay uh so uh, in in terms of uh, the new uh, set of businesses that uh, is getting uh, developed or seeded just wanted to have a understanding so for example if you could give uh, either some quantitative or a qualitative commentary on how your new products set is shaping up say for example like uh, new molecules that are going to be commercialized in fy22 how many you have commercialized in 21 and what are you seeing from your uh, customer side any impact of the china plus one thing if it is playing out because uh, last call i think you mentioned uh, on this i just wanted to understand anything additional that is coming up on this now so sort of i think uh, you know not something much to add i mean so the trend is still continuing uh, you know customers are also watchful they were concerned with you know the covid situation especially the second wave and the negative publicity which it had all over the world but at the same time you know we were in constant touch with them uh, we have kept our operations on to the best of our abilities and our customers also have appreciated that and i think the development work also is on track so there has been no negative uh, you know impact because of uh, you know covid or any other reasons on the development plans that we had also we keep getting more inquiries and more projects from customers uh, so you know every quarter we have uh, every quarter we are getting new customers inquiries new projects and uh, we've now you know as i mentioned we have now a vp in business development so with his help we also now formalize this entire process of how all new products inquiries will be you know screened and how they will be monitored and kind of a stage gate procedures for that so those things are progressing quite well and you know we remain so our current target is you know to make sure that what we have committed to so the existing installed capacity is 650 to 675 crore so ensure that in next two or three years do we have enough customer approvals and projects uh uh to kind of fill this capacity fully and once we do that then comes the next phase that okay uh, what is it that we want to do, uh, do that so currently based on the project pipeline you know we remain confident that this goal that we had set ourselves to try to utilize this capacity fully by fy24 uh, remains on track there is no negative impact and we will keep monitoring uh, every year you know what the demand looks like and whatever capacity looks like and keep making decisions based on that okay so uh, given that you know the picture looks even more rosier than maybe a year back uh, or a couple of years back when we had uh, started uh, interacting uh, is this 450 crores uh, guidance that you had uh, given 
is it looking something to be a little bit now on more on the conservative side and uh, should we expect that going ahead we may be able to exceed that you mean going ahead meaning this year right so this year yeah. target yeah so in this year you know there are so like you know the plant is also starting now like they've just started operation uh, in the month of may and like you know stabilizing so because it's the first year i would you know and also in first year there are a lot of customers uh, approvals etc are involved so that's the reason i would not i mean i would not like to comment to go beyond that and also we don't know how this covid plays frankly speaking you know uh, if we were to look at last year yes last year in the first one one and a half month we had a very strong challenge because the lockdown was very severe there was a lot of confusion so you know plants were either closed or partially closed uh but you know we also had the benefit that we had a overhang from the previous year so that kind of more or less made up for it correct but correct. uh in current year in the second wave so but if i were to look after that we were kind of running very smoothly and you know there was not like beyond may or june there was not very significant impact because of covid but uh in the second wave you know many more staff were uh, kind of affected and you know more people were affected more had to get hospitalized and even they took time to recover also what used to happen the bigger challenge for us which we keep facing is the engineering industry because as compared to chemical in engineering industry we see even more people working very closely and more manual operations so they get more affected and many a times uh, we have a case where uh, you know our some critical so especially when we are starting the head these new equipments we have everything ready when we started we want the team to be present to kind of guide us or for troubleshooting or things like that but you know they say oh, all my field engineers are affected we can't come so those challenges are also still there so i i i think you know you know maintaining 450 in spite of whatever has happened you know the challenges also that we faced in april and may that itself is a target so i would not want to kind of enhance that for the current year and yes whatever we said things which are improving what we are seeing is bound to help us uh, you know in the coming years and that also remains i mean we already committed uh, so that you know complete the capex so that we have a capacity of around 650 675 so let's see if i 23 24 uh, how it plays out sure that that's very helpful if i may uh, squeeze in uh, two quick bookkeeping questions Uh, so uh, your payable uh, days, uh, your total payables have actually gone up a bit uh, in the half year. Now it has slightly come down, but it is still high compared to FY20. Is this uh, uh, outcome of you know better credit terms that you have gotten from your suppliers, or is there anything yeah. else to do? No. Yeah. So uh, I answered that earlier. So it's mostly because of the better credit terms that we have gotten, uh, you know, from our suppliers. and with the neogen credit rating etc improving uh, my long term creditors are able to you know discount neogen bills so because of better visibility on neogen and things like that so they are, they can give us better credit terms uh, over a period of time and okay. as and i mentioned we also have a new person in our procurement team who has you know handled purchase of 1000 crore plus kind of a company so uh, he also knows how to you know get better terms and manage cash flows and things like that. Sure, sure. And uh, last question, uh, sir, on the debt side, should we expect any further increase at, on debt levels from FY21 in? Yes. So there's still some capex which is pending, and also as our business will increase, so debt will increase. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, Ketan, uh, uh, let me maybe just since we are com com completing, Ketan is a better person to answer this, but. our expectation is uh, in the range of around 250 to 275 yeah. uh, could be the debt levels uh, by the end of the year i mean we try to do better it will depend on you know exact working capital level improvements but this is what we are looking uh, at the end of the current year okay okay uh, thank you so much uh, that was very helpful and uh, all the best for fy22 thank you thank you sonam yeah Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bharat Shah from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, Hadin. Uh, uh, 
given the fact that we are in a uh, kind of a niche branch of uh, chemistry and a specialized one uh and if you look at over uh, so three years uh, won't you say that our growth is somewhat below our strengths and uh, ability to deliver even our margins don't fully reflect uh, the kind of specialty work that we do uh, because uh, if you see much bigger chemistry firms are growing day to day faster uh and uh, the margin that also at a level uh, which reflect that it a uh, far superior numbers so but uh, i thank you for the question uh, first of all you know uh, especially if we were to look at last three years and i would request you to look one more year behind so when we uh, bought karakadi unit uh, you know in fi 16 so we were If, uh, at the end of it, almost close to uh, end of Q3 of FY16. Uh, so in uh, FY17, we had only one quarter. We had around 110 crores. So from 110 crore in FY17 till let's say FY20, we went from 110 to almost uh, 300 odd crores. Uh, so that was, in my opinion, at least relatively quite good growth rate compared to our scale and compared to the capacity which was available. last year yes i mean to some extent you know ideally if this capacity would have come earlier uh, we were uh, you know we could have like even had a better growth rate and yes i mean uh, there was covid issue there was some growth which we missed because of lithium prices also being lower but overall yes the growth rate could have been better so i think for me you know the last year was similar to fy 17 where we increased only from 100 to 110 but we acquired the karakadi site we kind of created a framework which allowed us to grow well for next year so i feel this last year was like that and again this sets the tone for going forward uh, you know for us to go from around 36 crore we have done to let's say 675 crore by fi24 so this is what uh, we are currently targeting and uh, again you know during this year we also said that we will carefully keep looking and looking at the opportunities in front of us uh, choosing uh, the right opportunities uh, very carefully and whenever we feel uh, that uh, you know there is a need especially i think fi22 and 23 we have enough capacity but in fi24 uh, for fi24 we can see whether 650 is still the number or as you said because of our niche chemistry because of interest we can do better than 650 and then if necessary we can plan some capex uh, in the second half of fi23 to ensure uh, we have some additional headroom to grow in fi24 uh, you know this is one side uh, the second thing about you know improving the margin i mean i take your point and you know this also what we have seen is that many of these companies also in the legacy business don't earn so much and then when they go uh, from uh, they, when they go to more complex molecules with innovators uh, that is when slowly the margins improve so we have just started that journey uh, that csm business which we do more with innovator is still only 10% and still 50% come from you know one i mean one stage bromine derivative or another 17% come from inorganic chemistry so what we see is a combination of that so we would hope that as we go to you know uh, let's say 650 675 by fi24 uh, and as, if we are able to uh, convert uh, this you know increase in the advanced intermediates and the csm business with innovators then our margins also should improve but this is a target in front of us uh, i really need to first do it and then i can claim i have achieved it so i hope for that i answered your question yeah sure i appreciate that but let's say we do 650 in 3 years from now uh, from the 330 335 crore that we've done in uh, fy21 that still essentially will mean about doubling so about 24 or percent compounded growth and if our margins are unlikely to 
get beyond, uh, say, get into the bend of 20s rather than 18 or 17 or 19. Uh, that would still mean more or less similar kind of a growth in profitability. Uh, and uh, if you look at uh, uh, much larger firms uh, in the chemistry side, uh, they've been able to grow profits at a rate faster. Similar or let's say smaller size firms, uh, not as small as yours, but many of them are growing at a rate much faster with far uh, higher margins. So the uh, question is whether uh, there is a limitation on the branch of chemistry and what we are doing, or we need to be more aspirational. So I think we need to be more aspirational, keeping in mind, you know, the risks and our, you know, ability to manage growth. So as I mentioned, you know, currently, this is the number we have for FY24. And, you know, we will, uh, as I've said, at the end of every financial year or kind of basically between December to March, we will keep looking and we can say, can we be more aspirational as opposed to, you know, taking undue risk? Uh, so that will take a decision whether we can grow. I mean, this is the visibility that we have now. And every year, if suppose, for example, if we take a decision to have uh, more capex in FI23, I mean, uh, it will increase the ability of for me to do a higher revenue in FI24. This is what I can do now, which from my point of view is already quite ambitious. I mean, if we are growing. 24-25% uh, year on year for the next three years, with a chance of increasing it if things turn out well. Uh, that's what we want to currently start with. And then we will see uh, more we can do uh, every year if we have a clear business visibility. And again, on the margin side, uh, I take your point. I mean, we need to do a better job, uh, whether that is from better efficiency or through the scale of operation will allow us to do that. In my opinion, mostly it is innovation. I mean, uh, we have to work, uh, especially in the line of products we are, that now we have started doing complex molecules, and now in complex molecules, when we do majority innovation, uh, that's when we'll be able to deliver uh, better margin. Sure. One last thing. Uh, uh, while uh, competitor past uh, leaping into 650 watt crore bracket uh, certainly is uh, uh, a jump. Uh, but uh, do you see any possibility that this 650 itself, let's say we end up achieving say 575 or 600, that still will mean materially uh, kind of a reduced performance. Uh, so do you see risk to that, or do you think that is reasonably uh, should be aimed at and is possible to get? So uh, we are relatively quite confident uh, that, you know, this is something which we can achieve. Uh, this was the basis of our investment because now some of the additional revenue that we are targeting of around 650 crores, uh, you know, the additional revenue that we are targeting, some of it has already come through this multi-year contract where we have visibility. Uh, and I personally feel, as I mentioned earlier also, we always keep up option B, option C, et cetera, to make sure that, you know, if this doesn't work out, then we have this customer or this product revenue. So while, you know, margins may depend upon, you know, more profitable business works or more contract works, but achieving 650, what we have 650, 675 in that range by FI24, to me, uh, feels reasonably confident. But again, the only caveat here is, you know, how bad COVID becomes, you know, how, uh, whether there's a too much of a global protectionism or make at home kind of a concept. So those are things I don't know, which may make it more difficult. But from our side, so that's why we have not kind of given a formal guidance for 23 and 24, but we say we have a capacity for doing this, and uh, we feel that we should be able to achieve peak utilization by that time. Sure. Thank you, Arjun. Thank you, Varadhan. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pritesh Chetta from Lucky Investment Managers. Please go ahead. 
Yes, sir. Just one clarification from your commentary. Uh, what we are executing uh, in terms of capex is the 55 crore capex uh, at the age for putting up the 125,000 kiloliter capacity, right? Or are we doing one more round of capex of 55 crore, which is supposed to for which the reactors will start coming from Q3 and Q4? Yeah, so, uh, yes, so we had, if you look at our second quarter earnings call, we had said that in addition to the 75 crore, we are planning an additional 55 crore, uh, okay. which will give us a overall capacity, uh, which will give us an overall capacity of, uh, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it's about 650, 675 crore by FI24. As against the previous capacity, previous investment was going to give us a visibility of around 500 crore. So this uh, additional reactors, as I mentioned, uh, so will also start coming partly in Q3 and Q4. Okay, so when you mention 675 uh, crores uh, as your peak revenue, yeah. uh, you are considering both the the recently announced 55 crore capex, which you said about in the quarter two. Yeah. And uh, the 70 crore, which you had announced earlier, which included, let's say, 15 crore for inorganic and some 45, 50 crores for organic, right? No, it was 15 crore inorganic, then 75 crore organic, and then this 55 crore. So okay. I think if you just, there's a note in Q2, Q2 conference call earning presentation that will give you the clarity. Okay. And okay. So just 675 includes all, right? So just yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. All the KPEX which has been announced together is good okay. enough for us to reach around 675. So, so when you achieve this revenue, uh, what will be the change in your revenue mix uh, in terms, uh, from the current mix of <clears throat> bromine derivatives, advanced intermediates and lithium derivative? What would be the mix change? So what uh, we have targeted is that we achieve about 40% bromine derivative as against around 50-55% now. Then we said that the advanced intermediate will expand again from 30 to 40%. Uh -huh. And then the lithium will be roughly around 20%. So instead of 50, 30, 20, okay. it will be 40, 40, 20. And within that 30% currently, 20% is advanced intermediate and 10% is PSM. So we said we are trying to do 20% advanced intermediates and 20% CSM as part of the 40%. So that's the so that's something which we have discussed over the earlier call. And what is the incremental gross margin in the advanced intermediates? Uh, so again, at EBITDA level, they are similar. Now within advanced intermediates, some of them use higher raw material. So again, the range is uh, like, uh, okay, as an average, it is a bit lower. Uh, the gross margins are uh, like, so I think I uh, mentioned the gross margin range from 40% to uh, uh, 40 to 50% when it comes to uh, the uh, advanced uh, intermediates. As opposed to 30 to 45% in uh, our normal bromine delivery. This is for the raw material consumption. Yeah. So and again, you know, it depends really from product to product. So, and again, what happens is when this goes down, your processing cost goes higher. So at present, basically, we are saying, okay, you know, at least for FI22, we want to see how the product mix is playing out, which molecules of the advanced intermediates are coming. So let's stabilize the business, this new kind of framework in FI22, and then we'll give a better guidance on, you know, how the gross margin looks like, how EBITDA looks like. Uh, for FI 23-24 because in FI uh, 22 we are already trying to increase the business significantly uh, let's say from 336 to 450 we are also trying to stabilize this investment so there are a lot of variables in this first year so in first year we are trying to keep the margin similar so 18% plus or minus 1% in that range uh, and uh, going forward like you know as this stabilizes once we have more idea on the new cost structure uh, we can have a better idea on what the margins look like. The direction wise, it should be up, right? Because uh, the ad uh, advanced intermediates are, you know, uh, much higher pricing versus a bromine derivative. So, uh, directionally, uh, is it fair to assume that margin should inch higher? Uh, you, you can. It's fair to assume it will remain same and may get better. I mean, you know, but basically, what happens is, you know, advanced intermediates have its own challenges. So. 
in my opinion if i look at my margins also uh, i have basically earned really well where i have done innovation now that innovation i could be have done in lithium molecule also in bromine derivative also and in advanced intermediate also so where i have done innovation i earn more margin when there is not too much innovation you know even advanced intermediates and bromine derivative margins can be similar so you know it will really depend upon finally innovation and efficiencies and we are new to this right i mean the significant increase which we are doing in advanced intermediate multi stage chemistry etc so give us some time before i can you know give you a more a uh, confident answer that yes margin would improve and things like that and just what is your current debt what is your current debt uh, yeah. currently the debt is uh, ketan would you like 200. to answer that sorry yeah the current debt levels are at uh, 216 uh, 216 crores 216 okay. crores 21 this is march end two, yes 216 two, crores okay okay, okay. this is both put together long term and short term and in that 55 crore of extra the capex that capex you will spend this year right the 55 so is the 55 crore that has capex, partly come sorry. partly come only yeah. okay but the 75 crore is incurred right yes, yes. 75 is incurred okay okay that's why right. okay thank you very much all the best thank you sir thank you we would request participants to please limit your question to one per participant and if you have a follow up question we would request you to rejoin the queue thank you the next question is from the line of ashutosh tarut from ocean dial amc please go ahead hello yes yeah so uh, 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 most of the questions have been answered i wanted to understand what would be uh, the asset turnover uh, over the new capex which we are uh, incurring uh, we Because estimate it to be you know overall if you look at overall around 130 140 crore which we are spending in the hedge is giving us a visibility of around uh, you know 250 uh, odd crore so from 500 to sorry uh, uh, sorry from 350 to around 650 so around 300 odd crore so uh, let's say it's around two and a half to three in that range because since two to, uh, since fy17 odd uh, our asset turnover has, has been around three times and uh, and we have done capex in the past so, so is there any uh, i mean is there any possibility that the asset turnover would be exceeding three times given that uh, we are getting into different kind of a chemistry as compared to uh, the bromine uh, uh, which we used to do uh, which was was the higher revenue share so don't you think it can give us a better uh, asset turnover going ahead uh, so the new molecules require more processing time uh, for a given revenue so therefore you know the asset turn would be either similar or slightly lower so that's why we are predicting at least for the existing uh, capex when we did uh we our uh, view was uh, you know 650 to 675 again it depends on the product mix but 650 to 675 is a reasonable number and you know if you are looking at 650 675 coming out of around uh, one uh, around 130 uh, 130 140 crore revenues so that is translating to around two and a half overall i think you know advanced intermediates because you are also working for mncs and the standard because of complex chemistry the investment also is little bit on a higher side and uh, on the other side uh, the processing time as i mentioned earlier is also longer right so just if you can give us some uh, idea of how the roe and roc is would shape up because we are talking about uh, capex uh, uh, the asset turnover being slightly lower and if the margins are going to be similar then do you think these these the return ratios would be uh, lower uh, let's say 3 4 years down the line as compared to the healthy ones which we have right now uh, so i think ketan has done analysis i would uh, you know uh, give uh, answer uh, let ketan answer uh, this question uh, so what we think can uh, estimate is that roe should improve down the line and similar at the roc level for the next uh, fina- this financial year that ending 22 we might improve sa- slightly but uh, in the coming years we should uh, improve by at least 2 to 2% approximately 
Thank you. I would request Mr. Gunner to rejoin the queue for follow-up questions. Request participants to limit your question to one at a time. The next question is from the line of the research team from Canadian Asset Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. So my question is more on the CAPEX side. So out of the 135 crore CAPEX, what is the component? So 75 crore is for organic chemicals, right? What is the other, uh, uh, you know, breakup of this number? Uh, all of this is for organic. Mm. Okay. So, I mean, our plan to keep it for 75 crores, is there, is there a cost overrun or can you just move, uh, you know, explain why? Is that uh, over 75 crores? Yeah, so there were some cost overruns, uh, just, uh, but I mean, you know, uh, about a few crores or something. So, we'll have a more clear picture when phase one and phase two both gets completed. So, we'll have an exact idea. But, you know, recently you might have seen the steel prices have kind of increased a bit. Uh, also, uh, some of the costs were higher because of COVID-related challenges. Uh, some of the pre-operative expenses also kind of build up, you know, because earlier this was planned uh, to get started in Jan to March. So, there is some increase uh, to the tune of around eight, 5 to 10 crores in the range so far. But I think we'll have a proper idea once we finish the year uh, uh, that, okay, what does the overall CAPEX number look like? But I think the increased budget number, uh, debt numbers, which, uh, you know, Ketan shared earlier, uh, they basically take this into account. Correct. And what part of the 55 crore CAPEX of advanced intermediate is included in current year's CAPEX? Uh, so again, uh, you know, uh, both these are in the same plan and there is no distinction that this is advanced and this is uh, bromine derivatives. But our uh, estimate is that, you know, so we, uh, just once again, Kiran, do you have that number immediately? So how much of the second phase? We have? About 25 crore, yeah. 25 yeah. odd crore of the second phase we have done. We, have so done. we still have around 30, 35 crore. 35 crore. Right? So 35 crores would be something which will be spent next year, right? Additional uh, capex in the hedge uh, in the current year. I mean, FI22, there would be a 30, 35 crore more capex to get this project completed. Yeah, and okay. uh, there will also be some other maintenance capex at other. Some guidance on that number, sir? Uh, currently, we have not finalized, but we expect it to be in the range of around 20 to 25 crores. Thank you. I would request the current participant to rejoin the queue for follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Bob Lee from Falcon. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, as we move towards uh, higher scale and higher value-added molecules, uh, which of your peers are you trying to emulate? Are there any players that have achieved, say, turnover about 1,000 crores or so in this business and growing derivatives? Uh, so thank you for the question. Uh, I don't think in, so we have basically three businesses, right? Bromine derivatives, we have the advanced intermediate, uh, and you know, part of that is custom synthesis and manufacturing. And then you have uh, the third, which is a lithium business. So as such, if you were to look at each individual, there are no uh, peers in India, which is specialized in bromine, or there are no other peers who are specialized in lithium. But when it comes to advanced intermediate or CSM or similar kind of specialty chemical, if I take a broader view, then there are companies like, you know, Naveen Florine or SRF, which have uh, some like legacy business like ours, then they have the specialty intermediate. We have done 1,000 crore plus kind of business. So there is Atul, there is uh, RP, there is Naveen, and there is uh, uh, SRF. And, you know, there are some others also in CSM space who have done that. So I think, yeah, there are some peers like that. No, but uh, what I mean is specific to bromine. bromine uh, so specifically chemistry. to bromine chemistry, uh, you know, there are some eight, nine companies uh, in the world which specialize in making specialty bromine derivatives. So they are in Europe, they are in Japan, uh, some of them are in China, but they have not ventured into the advanced intermediate business. So we are one of the, like, you know, uh, kind of odd one out when it comes to pure play specialty bromine player who also does more advanced intermediate. So that's why. So are, <coughs> so are there bromine players who do bulk bromine? Yeah, so when when it comes to bulk bromine derivatives, that's an entirely different business. 
and most of the time there are some few worldwide big bromine manufacturers who themselves make bromine derivatives so if you were to look at a company called albe marle and uh, there was a company called kemchura which was acquired by langsess and in israel there is a group called icl israel chemical limited so they have a sub uh, uh, sub division which is into bromine derivatives uh, similarly uh, kemchura is now taken over by langsess so they also make uh, uh, bromine and bromine derivatives and the third is albe marle one of the division yeah I, <clears throat> yeah right i am aware of that i think my question is uh, alludes to whether your specialization your rather narrow specialization in bromine derivatives yeah allows for a high scale right because mm-hmm. there aren't i mean as far as my research goes there aren't many companies that are as narrowly focused as you are uh and i don't see companies achieving very high scale is this a really niche market where you can't scale up much i guess is is really what i'm after yeah so i mean if you were to think of specialty bromine derivatives as a business uh, what is estimated that the worldwide demand of specialty bromine derivatives per se is about 50000 metric ton uh, as against that we are somewhere already at around 3000 odd crore of uh, bromine consumption before our expansion and it may increase to around 4000 to 5000 in that range over next 2 to 3 years so we kind of are at around 10% of what is worldwide specialty protein consumption range uh, of course uh, what happens is your revenue depends on using that bromine do you make a 10 or 15 dollar molecule or you add more chemistry become make it more complex and make a 200 dollar or a 300 dollar molecule so that basically says what is the revenue you can get out of that so that's what we have done that instead of just limiting ourselves to making only bromine derivatives we started already now doing bromination plus other chemistries and you know now we have done almost six seven stage uh, multi stage reaction now for several molecules and this plant is also designed keeping that in mind so now it's not only bromine it's what uh, like you know how we scale up to this other business so we already committed uh, we already kind of envision or plan uh, that the share of this in our business will enhance as we double our business and then going forward yes i mean this is the piece which will keep uh, increasing and what also happens that once we demonstrate ourselves and our ability to do multi step chemistry then sometimes we are already also getting projects where there is no bromination and still you know just because of our reliability uh you know customers come so while the bromine gets the customer interested to begin with at once they see the reliability they also give us other molecules in opportunity thank you i would request ms ali to rejoin the queue for follow up question the next question is from the line of anirudh chetty from solidarity investment managers please go ahead thanks for taking the question i have two questions i'm sorry uh, mr chetty we cannot hear you Yeah. Am I? Uh, is it better now? Your volume is very less, sir. Can you please increase the volume on your phone or come closer to the handset? Ah, uh, yeah. How about now? Yeah, Mr. Anil, we can hear. So, yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, so my first question is, you know, ah, uh, you know, if I look at your gross profit margin for the last two years, it has ah uh, been between ah uh, you know thirty nine and forty one percent. and this is despite uh, you know your downstream business uh, increasing from practically zero to now 30% uh, so you know given that it's a much higher the gross profit margin business compared to the bromine derivatives why hasn't that reflected in the overall gross profit numbers yeah so uh, you know this advanced intermediates have contributed uh, more significantly so this has been there since almost fi 17 so i think uh, you have to start uh, looking from you know f5 15 16 numbers but you're right i mean you know uh, it's basically in the range of uh, i mean my range is usually 38 to 42% so uh, again even in advanced intermediate within that you know this multi step chemistry where there is a bigger difference so if you are doing one stage two stage three stage it makes a difference but sometimes what happens is what you are combining also as a higher value so it depends on that so that's why when i answered earlier question just because advance intermediate so better uh, gross margins is not always true so again in, within that also it depends on molecules and there are some molecules where 
especially when you are doing five stage, six stage chemistry, which you know we just started doing last year. You know, so that's where you've seen some improvement, and I think that share also of the business is relatively lower. And along with that, a lot of other things are happening in lithium, other bromine derivatives, and things like that. So that's why it, it has been in this narrow range. We've seen some improvement. So we'll see, as I mentioned, you know, give us this one year to kind of stabilize, and then we'll have a better idea where the margins go, uh, and you know, as the percentage of this business also increases. Got it. Uh, and my second question was uh, on the net debt number. So in twenty twenty two, are we looking at a two fifty to two seventy five crore debt net debt number? It's going to be confirmed. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, so, you know, given that we are looking to do about 450 crores of sales and, you know, assuming EBITDA margin stays at 19%, that's about 85 crores of EBITDA. So, you know, we'll be closer towards the three times uh, kind of net debt to EBITDA. So, uh, you know, just wanted your thoughts on, you know, how, how do you look at, you know, balancing growth and, you know, the uh, balance sheet strength and if there's any red line that you guys think of internally beyond which you all would not like to go. Yeah, so I think uh, we've mentioned that, that ideally, like debt equity, not more than 1.25 and debt EBITDA, you know, not uh, more than 3.5. I mean, these two are kind of, uh, this is what we don't want to do. And, you know, that's when we think we will take a pause. Of course, now what has happened is that, you know, in this year we are doing 450, but majority of investment for, you know, reaching up to 650 will happen now. Uh, so that's why this is a year and then, you know, next year we will again take a call whether we need to do that or we need to take a pause or even if we do, maybe we'll do it in second half because we have enough headroom for FI23 and only once we know what is FI23 clarity uh, of how much we are reaching and only when we feel that the capacity is now hitting 80-80% utilization on a regular basis, that's when we'll think of a significant capex. I mean, we'll do maintenance capex. We may do some small incremental capex for some specific molecules for modification or things like that. But uh, this is what our current comfort levels are. So we are okay, you know, when we know for some quarters or for a year we are exiting this slightly, uh, we are okay, but not for a long period of time. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhawan Shah from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so most of my questions will be answered. So I, I have just one, two questions. Uh, firstly, about the customer engagement uh, for the CSM business. So you said that uh, maybe the ex additional four to six, I mean, two to four customers uh, that we were engaging maybe two or three quarters back. So how is the, you know, uh, is there any stopping block over there? I mean, because of the COVID-related challenges, the negotiation uh, ha has not been improved or... Is there any other, you know, uh, challenges you are facing? So if you can share thoughts on that. And uh, maybe, you know, if we get uh, one or two customers, maybe new additional customer, customer for the CSM business, do we have to come up with the uh, further capex? I mean, this phase two, maybe, uh, maybe you know, uh, doing some bit for the organic growth. But uh, if another two customers comes in, then do we have to go ahead with the uh, another expansion? If you can share thoughts on that. So I think on the first, uh, basically what is happening is that uh, when we two quarters, of, I mean, at the end of quarter two, when we had planned our, uh, this additional capex is when we had mentioned that number. So roughly around two quarters ago, we had that discussion. Uh, and generally, there is no challenges with regards to COVID. It's only that, uh, you know, it's going through the stages. So there's a developmental cycle, as I mentioned where you first make it few kgs in R&D, then you make few hundreds of kgs in pilot plant, then you make a first commercial run of, you know, one ton, two ton, or couple of metric tons, and then you go get into the tens of metric ton or hundreds of metric ton, depending on, you know, how many stages and value of the material. So I think we are just going through that phases, and, you know, it's going from one stage to another to another, and that is something which is expected. But, you know, so some of these are the ones which would, be required in the second half of FI23 or early 20, FI24, they would want, they would most likely materialize. And again, you know, if it, if they don't for any reason, we also have existing demand from our existing customers, which will be required. So I think that's answering your first question. 
the second question is that yes as long as if the revenues are remaining in this phase up to 650 crore as long whatever uh, estimate is that the existing capacity should be re- sufficient i mean we may have to some doing some rejig here or there or change few reactors etc but we don't require a major capex where we have to build a new manufacturing block if the revenue potential goes beyond 650 that is when uh, we will have to uh, you know uh, set up a, another manufacturing block either in dahej or in karakli for which we have environment clearance and now we have major infrastructure so relatively it can come up with a shorter duration of time uh, once so we'll we'll think of that only once we have a very clear visibility on the 650 675 and that's when we'll take a call And so, how is the order backlog for this? Uh, the two customers were, which we have got maybe two years, two quarters back. So, how yeah. is the order booking the CSM business? I mean, how much revenue are we expecting for this first year? Yeah. So, you know, I had guided that we are expecting around sixty uh, to eighty crore between the two customers in this year. And you know, more or less based on whatever POs we have already received, or you know, some of the cust- one customer releases PO every quarter on quarter. uh but you know they give us a volume projection so based on that we are in that range that these two contracts together should contribute around 60 to 80 crore in the current financial year okay and so lastly about the other expenditure you mentioned that there was some higher manufacturing cost but still you know if i look at on quarter on quarter basis i mean around 3 to 4 crore is still higher so is this entirely related to the manufacturing cost or is there any one time cost also no this is entirely manufacturing cost one is you know the utilization level in this quarter were was bit higher because uh, you know previous quarters there was always something or other related to covid but in q4 we hit almost close to 90% utilization levels in organic at both my plants where you know normal norm is around 80% so that was one of the contributing factors and the second was as i said that we had a set of products where uh you know the processing time was more so and the raw material cost was lower so that the rm percentage was lower and uh, the manufacturing cost was higher so there is no specific one time uh, for this cost thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments uh thank you all the participants for joining the call i hope we were able to satisfactorily respond to your questions if you have any more questions please feel free to contact our investor relation team cdr india and we will address them thank you once again and we look forward to connecting with all of you in the next quarter thank you on behalf of nitrogen chemicals limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines